Hi Spanish 2 students, uh, this lecture is going to be about episodio 11, uh, this is a week 5, lecture 1, and here is what we'll be discussing. Uh, we're going to talk about direct objects. Um, and what is a direct object? Well, a direct object uh, receives an action uh, of a verb directly. So let's look at the sentences. Sukra reads the book. Magda bakes cookies. Sandra hits the ball. Um, so in all of these sentences, you can definitely find the subject, who is doing the action, the verb, or what the action is, and then there's something that is affected by this action. So um, in this case, the book, cookies, and the ball are uh, direct objects. Um, and sometimes direct objects can be people or things. Um, so my sentence here is Sandra hits the student. The student is the direct object taking the action. Um, and I'm using DO as the direct object. So the direct object will answer the question what and whom regarding the action of the subject in the sentence. So think of who gets affected by this. Um, um, and then we have we usually replace the name of an object with an object pronoun. Um, and we do this both in English and Spanish. So I'm just going to go ahead and give you a silly example in, in English, which, you know, just to make sure that you're following me. Um, so Paul buys flowers once a month. He takes the flowers home. He gives the flowers to his wife. Um, so it's okay to mention flowers once, you know, because you have to tell me kind of be specific but after that it sounds a little repetitive uh, so in English what we usually do is we will mention the direct object once oh, and the subject right um, so take a look at this this is with the direct object pronoun uh, Paul buys flowers once a month he takes them home he gives them to his wife so here we're using a pronoun object pronoun them to replace flowers um, in Spanish we have a special set of pronouns that replaces the name of the object. Uh, and we're going to talk about those. <clears throat> so direct pronouns, direct object pronouns. Uh, when the pronoun replaces the name of a direct object, use the following pronouns. And these are going to be different from the subject pronouns. Me, te, lo, la, nos, os, los, las. Okay. Um, so, in, um, when do we use these? We will use these after the verb. So, take a look at this. I'm sorry, before the verb. Uh, in an affirmative statement with one verb, so remember, one verb, the direct object pronoun comes before the conjugated verb. Okay, so let's take a look at the sentence, okay? I have the cookie. Um, I have... Tengo the cookie, la galleta, okay? So, what if I don't, I'm talking about cookies for quite a bit of time, um, I'm talking about a particular cookie, um, and I don't want to sound repetitive, right? So I will eventually, instead of saying la galleta, la galleta, la galleta, I'm going to use it, and I'm going to use la, right? So, tengo la galleta. Uh, another easy, simple way to say it is la tengo, right? La means la galleta. Tengo is I have, right? Because tengo is conjugated to the yo form. Okay, so notice how this direct object pronoun comes before the verb. And it's only one verb that we're dealing with here. Okay, the subject of a sentence does not affect the direct object. Okay, so remember subject pronouns, these are different. So make sure that you keep track of those as well. Um, Sandra tiene la galleta. Sandra has a cookie. Um, how do I make this, you know, simpler? Um, Sandra la tiene. Sandra has it. So think of it this way. Sandra has it. Uh, Sandra la tiene. And when I say la you know I'm talking about a particular cookie from earlier. Okay, so let's go ahead and practice translating these sentences, okay? Uh, number one, 
nosotros, oh, I'm sorry, not translating. Uh, what you are doing is you're going to replace the object with a direct object pronoun, okay? So, uh, sentence number one, nosotros tenemos un boleto. We have one ticket. Uh, number two, ellos tienen boletos. They have tickets. Number three, tú tienes galletas. You have cookies. Okay, so make sure you know your subject, the verb, and make sure you know your direct object pronoun, and make sure you use, you replace your direct object pronouns with your, I'm sorry, your direct objects with pronouns. Um, so you don't need to translate. Go ahead, take a moment, pause the video, um, and we'll check your answer shortly. Okay, so I'm guessing you um, go, went ahead and rewrote the sentences to make them a little bit more simple. So let's go take a look at the answers. Okay, nosotros tenemos un boleto, right? One ticket, uh, singular, and it's male, boleto. Nosotros lo tenemos. So notice we have nosotros tenemos, and instead of saying un boleto, Instead of saying we have it, we just say lo. Uh, ellos tienen boletos. Uh, boletos is plural, so ellos tienen, ellos los tienen. And los is replacing boletos. Uh, tú tienes galletas. Tú las tienes. Okay? And notice that in all of these we have the direct object pronoun before the verb. And notice also there is only one verb in all of these simple sentences. Okay, so um, this is just extra examples that are not in the book. Um, if you have not had the chance already, go ahead and look at page 263 on your textbook. Look at exercise F and notice where me is placed in relation to the sentence. Okay, and then look at G and just go ahead and answer these questions who does what for you? Um, this is very helpful uh, because uh, chapter 11 is focusing a lot on me y te. So the you do this for me and um, I do this for you. So just the me and the te. Uh, but if you look at chapter 12, we kind of go through the rest of the forms of the direct object pronouns. Um, so here's an example. ¿Quién te da buenos consejos? Who gives you good advice? Mi mejor amiga me da buenos consejos, right? She gives them to me. Uh, ella me da buenos consejos. So that's a more uh, kind of like clear, short version. Um, and that's it. Thank you for watching.